Hi, my name's Alan Smith, and this webcast is going to focus on using logic apps and as our cognitive services to process images. We'll start out by creating a logic app that can take an image as a payload. We'll then look at how we can use the Azure Computer Vision service to provide a description on that image and also identify celebrities in that image. We'll then look at how we can use an image classification model trained in the Azure Custom Vision service to identify the type of car that's present in the image. I've provided links to all the relevant documentation in the description section, along with a link to download Postman which is the free tool that I'm using to test the Logic app. And this is a demo that I very often do on my training courses. So if you're interested in training in any of the Microsoft or AI technologies, I've provided contact information in the description. So we're gonna be creating a few resources for this demo. So I'm gonna create a new resource group. I'll call it Logic Apps AI. I'm dropping this in the Visual Studio Enterprise subscription and we'll place this in uh, West Europe, which is the closest region to where I am uh, located. Okay, so we can navigate to the resource group and the first resource I'm gonna create is a Logic App. So I'm gonna select that and um, in the Logic App section, we've got a choice of the runtimes. I can use a consumption plan or we can use the standard plan. And for prototyping the consumption plan, it's a pay as you go. And I'm not gonna be running that many Logic Apps. So this is gonna be the cheapest option. And we'll call this cars and celebs. And let's create that. Okay, I edited the recording a bit. It took about 30 seconds, 20 or 30 seconds to create that Logic App. So we can browse to the resource and that's gonna take us into the Logic App Designer. So the first thing we're gonna choose is what is going to activate the Logic App. We've got a choice of, you know, messages on service bus, recurring triggers, um, you know, when a new tweet is posted, when a file is uploaded to an FTP server. But in this case, I'm gonna choose uh, when an HTTP request is received. And that's gonna create my uh, Logic App. We don't need to worry about JSON. We're gonna be working with images. So I can save this Logic App and that's gonna generate a URL for us. Now, in order to test this, I want to send a post request to this particular URL uh, with the body of the post request containing an image. So I'm gonna copy the URL and I'm gonna use Postman uh, to send this uh, request. So it's a post request going to this URL and the body is gonna be binary data, and I'm gonna select a file. And then this folder, I've got some test images that I can use. So the one that I'm gonna take is uh, Elon Tesla, which is Elon Musk standing next to a Tesla. If I open the image, you can see that it's a quite a high resolution image there, uh, quite a clear picture. And I'm gonna select that as the body, and I'm gonna send this. So what we can see is we're getting a status 202 accepted. This basically means that the request has been accepted for processing, but the processing has not been completed. The request might or might not eventually be acted upon. It may be disallowed while processing actually takes place, which basically means that the Logic App is running. It's received the particular image and we should hopefully have executed the Logic App. So I can switch to the overview and here we can see the runs history. We can see we had a run that succeeded. And the great thing about Logic Apps is we can go in and we can see the execution details. So here we've got the actual uh, content. The content type was image JPEG. And you can see that we've got the base 64 encoding there of the actual image data. So switching back to the Logic Designer, we want to be able to do something uh, with this uh, particular image. And what I'd like to do first is use the, the computer vision service in Azure Cognitive Services to analyze the image. So in the overview, I should have a link back to the Logic Apps AI resource group, and I'm gonna create an instance of the computer vision service. So I can select computer vision and select create. Again, I'm gonna drop this in the West Europe uh, resource group, and the name of this will be cars and, cars and celebs CV uh, for cars and celebs computer vision. The pricing tier, I would recommend using the free tier uh, for experimenting. You're allowed to create one free tier in each subscription. I've already created a free tier that I've used in another webcast, so I'm gonna use the standard tier. It's not very expensive to use if we're just working with it with proof of concepts. 
What I also need to do is in the basics, I need to agree to the reasonable AI at terms and conditions and uh, click on create and that will create my computer vision service for me. Again, I paused the recording. It took about 20 seconds to create that resource. And if we browse to the resource, uh, we're going to need, when we call this, uh, we're going to need to have you know, the details on the keys and the endpoints uh, for the uh, resource. So uh, what I should be able to do is to go to the overview. I can bring up um, the logic app in another blade. So I can switch between the blades when I need to access the details. So here's cars and celebs, the logic app. We'll go to the logic app designer. And in the logic app designer, I'm going to add a step to call out to the computer vision service. So we're using the computer vision API. And what we'd like to do is get a description on the image. There's all kinds of different, uh, different things that we can do, like object detection, generating thumbnails, getting areas of interest. But I'm just going to get a description on that image that we can use as a caption uh, for that image. So the connection name, I'm going to call the same name as the computer vision service. So it's going to be cars and celebs CV. The authentication type is going to be API key. So we need to specify the account key which should be in the keys and endpoints section here. I can copy this key and drop it in there. And then the site URL, I can also copy that into the clipboard and paste that in there. Now what this will do is create the actual connection to that particular service. And now it's asking us to specify the source of the image. And um, this is either going to be the body of the image uh, as binary data, or it's going to be a reference to a URL where the image is located. And as we've got the image uh, posted to us in the Logic App, we can use image content there. So the image content is going to be something from the HTTP request. It's not showing anything that matches the input, input format. So if I click on uh, Show More, I can actually select Body and uh, I can save this actual uh, logic app. So what I can do is now flip back to Postman. I can send the image again. And you can see that we've got the 202 accepted. It has successfully started the logic app. And going back to the portal, we can go to the overview. And you can see that we've got another execution that succeeded. And this time uh, we can look and describe an image and we can see the actual output. So you can see that we've got the captions coming out there and it's saying Elon Musk standing in front of a car with a 94.3% confidence. And then it's got a bunch of tag names. If you wanted to do you know, a tagged search for this, we could, uh, we could use those for that. But I'm most interested in the actual uh, caption. So what I can do now uh, is make calls out to other APIs. I'm actually going to put a response in this a bit later on and combine those actual uh, results together. Now, when we're calling APIs, uh, I could call APIs sequentially like one, two, three. However, it's going to take quite a long time because it takes a certain amount of time to call this API, then the other API, then the third API. So I want to do these in parallel uh, in order to speed up the actual processing. So if I drop back to the uh, Logic Apps Designer, I should be able to add a, a parallel branch and um, although we had Elon Musk described in the, um, the actual description of the image, I would like to identify any celebrities uh, that we've got in the image. So going to the computer vision API again, we've got the option to work with domain specific models. So we've got this option, recognize domain specific content. We've got this version, we've got a version three, uh, which is in, uh, in preview. So I can select this version here. And this is already connected uh, to the um, API service. You can see it's connected to cars and celeb CV. I don't need to reconfigure that. The domain model that I'm going to be selecting is celebrities. And the image source, it's going to be the same. It's going to be image content. And the image content, again, is going to be the HTTP request body. OK. So I should now be able to save this logic app and I can send the request again in Postman. So in the overview, we've got another successful run. I can go into the runs history and we can see what we're getting out from the, uh, the second uh, response there, recognized domain specific content. So if we show the raw outputs, 
You can see that it has identified Elon Musk as a celebrity, 99.997% confident that it was Elon Musk. And we've even got a face rectangle. Um, so we could, if we wanted to play around with images, we could draw a bounding box around Elon, Musk, uh, Elon Musk's uh, face uh, there. So it's got that, uh, that data uh, for us there. Okay. Now what I'd like to do is to identify what type of car was in the image. So within the other Azure Custom Vision Service, I've trained a number of different models and uh, I've published some endpoints uh, that can be used for uh, classification and object detection. If you want to learn how to do this, um, then I have done some other webcasts on this. I've got one for birds, one for dogs. You can even put in Mel uh, spectrograms uh, from music and you can do music genre uh, classification. Um, I'm going to go to the fast cars uh, because this is something that I have got published and what this should be able to do is recognize various cars like Aston Martins, Enzo Ferraris, Porsche GT3s, Lamborghinis and we've got the Tesla Model S there as one of the classes and I've trained it on 100 images of each class. So um, what I should be able to do now is make a call out to this service, uh, the custom vision service and actually find out what type of car is in the image. So if I drop back here and I go back to the Logic Apps Designer, again, we're gonna do this in parallel. So I'm gonna drop in uh, another parallel branch. And here, instead of using the computer vision, we're gonna use a uh, custom vision. So we've got various options. We can classify an image, classify an image from a URL. And if we've done an object detection model, we can detect objects in the image. So I'm gonna select classify an image and as with the um, computer vision service, we've got to uh, specify the connection name and the prediction key and the site URL. So the connection name, I'm just gonna call it fast cars because that's the name of the model uh, that I've got. The prediction key should be here if I go into um, performance. We've got the details on the prediction URL. So the prediction key header is gonna be this. Then the site URL is gonna be, it's quite long, this URL, but that's the full URL specifying the project ID and everything. What I'm really interested in is just the first part of the URL, which is custom vision webcast prediction .cognitive -services .com. So I can copy that and uh, drop back and specify that as the actual URL. And that will create a connection to that particular uh, detection service. Now we need to specify the ID of the product, uh, the published name of the product and the image content. So in the um, settings here, we can see the project ID. So I'm gonna copy that and uh, drop that in there. The published name was, um, if I go back to um, the performance, you can see that this iteration three is published as fast cars. So that's the published name. And we need to specify the image content. Again, this is gonna be the body from the HTTP request. So I can save this logic app and send the request from Postman. Okay, so this time in the overview, uh, we've got our other um, instance that has succeeded. We want to see the output of the classify an image uh, section here. So in the raw outputs, uh, we can see the actual predictions that are coming. So we've got the, um, the five different classes that I specified there. And these are the percentages about um, you know, which class uh, the model has predicted. So it's predicting 93% certainty that this was a Tesla at Model S. So back in the Logic Apps Designer, what we'd like to do is to basically return a response to the client with details from all three of these at uh, these service calls. So what I'm gonna do is to drop on a new step and specify that we'd like to send back a response. And you can see we've got the response shape uh, that we can use there. We're gonna send back a status code 200. We can include any headers in there uh, that we want. And then the actual body uh, response content is gonna be built up from the three of these calls. And I can say that we've got the description and then what I want to do is to select from the appropriate shape. So this is gonna be coming from describe an image. And within describe an image, I'm gonna select the captions uh, that have been uh, generated. After that, we can use these celebrities. 
So I'll specify celebs, and then that's gonna come from the recognized domain specific content, and it's gonna be um, the celebrities, which is gonna be array of celebrities that are detected. Sometimes there may be one, more than one celebrity in the image. And then I'm gonna have the car prediction, and this is gonna be coming from the uh, classify an image, uh, and it's gonna be the predictions uh, that we are specifying there. So, for save this logic app, drop back to Postman and we send in the request. What we can see is we're getting the response here. You can see that we've got the car prediction coming out with, uh, with Tesla Model S. We've got the celebrities detected as being Elon Musk. And we've got Elon Musk standing in front of a car as the actual uh, caption. So let's try some different images. Uh, we've got, uh, let's go for this one here, Joe Rogan uh, with a Tesla. This one, it hasn't got the car prediction right. It predicted that this was a Lamborghini. Uh, Tesla Model S came in second place. But it's detecting Joe Rogan as the celebrity there. The description is a graphical user interface there. Um, so it's kind of um, not got that entirely right. Let's try another one. So this one here, if I open this, you can see we've got a couple of uh, celebrities. We've also got James May as well, um, and we've got a Tesla. So let's just see what it thinks of this particular image there. And we send this. So here it's picked up 99.999% certain that this is a Tesla Model S. So it's done very well on that one there. It's picked up Joe Rogan and it's picked up Kane West as well. However, it hasn't picked up James May. Uh, we've got Joe Rogan and Kane West are posing for a picture. So let's try another one. So here again, we got Tesla Model S. We got Snoop Dogg as a celebrity. Snoop Dogg's wearing a suit and tie sitting in a car. Um, don't know if he's actually sitting in a car, but he's kind of sitting sitting close to the car. And uh, finally, let's just try this one here and uh, send that one in. So here it predicted a Lamborghini. Um, if we select a file um, and just open this thing here, I think that's more an Aston Martin than uh, a Lamborghini. So if we go down to the celebs, it has detected Jeremy Clarkson, it's detected Richard Hammond, and it has detected James May at uh, that time. Fairly good certainty on all three of those uh, celebrities. And you can see Richard Hammond, Jeremy Clarkson, and James May are posing uh, for a picture. So takeaways from this. Um, I think it's really nice uh, to be able to work with logic apps for uh, for prototyping. Uh, you know, scenarios where you may want to use these. Your boss comes to see you and says they've got a client. We need to see a proof of concept of um, you know some what we can do with AI. Um, we're having a meeting tomorrow lunchtime. Can you build something uh, for tomorrow lunchtime? You could also build this, uh, you know, using as our functions and, and uh, writing C Sharp to make calls to these APIs. However, it's going to take you longer uh, than half an hour to build that simple uh, proof of concept. Logic apps are great uh, for prototyping and, uh, and making calls out to these APIs. When you look at the costs, uh, it is more expensive to use a logic app than it is to use something like Azure Functions. So in production, if you're running like thousands and thousands of these, it might be nice to use Azure Functions to, uh, to uh, reduce the costs on those. But um, I really like the way that you've got the, um, the actual drilling in to the running instances. We can go into the runs history. We can identify how long each shape took to run. We've got detailed analysis of the outputs of these, uh, these various uh, shapes as well. So it's good, giving a good indication of how these executed uh, when we run. You can call out to many different cognitive services here. So if you want to take in a document and do optical character recognition, if you want to filter any images for explicit content, do object detection and so on, then you've got the option of doing that. You can also trigger logic apps from different triggers. So when a blob is uploaded into blob storage, uh, then it could be triggered on the images that are being uploaded on a particular website for the website content to be able to provide captions on those images. So it's very versatile and very quick connecting to these various uh, Azure services.